It's it's been a while since we did a video, and it's been a while that I recorded a video about two weeks now. So this feels somewhat weird and foreign again but we're back and we're gonna cover everything that we missed luckily it's not that much because we basically only need to go over the reprints for the v kind collection and some small stuff for the upcoming set four as we got some more information as well as some promos that are somewhat interesting so without any further ado let's jump straight into the video Hey Carfighters, welcome back to finally a new video on the channel and we're gonna jump straight into a brand new Carfit update to catch up to all the information that we missed since my absence the last 10 plus days. So that said, let's talk about the new reprints for the upcoming V Clan collection because we already saw all the new card units being confirmed as well as their skill description, but we didn't saw the reprints as of 10 days ago. So, you're probably aware, aware to some extent, but for those who aren't up to speed or haven't really touched upon them or want to know my opinion about them, let's go over them very, very quick and give snippets to what I think about the particular choices and if I think they're going to be impactful or not. So, first up, we got these three clans, Royal Padalane, Oracle Think Tank, and Genesis. Now, for Royal Padalane, I don't really f have anything of notoriety here. They're fine. I think the Grade 2 reprint of the promo is nice, but we already got that one. For Genesis, Nothing really special except for Gleitner. Gleitner is a nice reprint because it's actually a very powerful card that actually works very nice in V as well as in Premium. So having another option to it, probably a bit cheaper, is nice. The more interesting part is Oracle Think Tank because they're all witches for the new witches support. And the nice part is, is that the Grade 2 is a brand new great import that we never got. The Cobalt Witch, I think, is Poo Poo or Pee Pee. We never got her, so we finally have her. The only thing that I'm kind of disappointed here is that the great free witch they chose is Zaza and not Coco. I don't know why. Coco is probably going to be the main card that you're going to need, unless the new support basically replaces her, but I don't really think that's going to happen. So, yeah, this is the only thing that probably makes Coco a bit too expensive. But luckily, I got a playset, but for anybody that doesn't have a playset, probably need to get your hands on them as soon as possible as but wait till we get the actual skill reveals till we know if we actually gonna need her then we got Kagero, murakumo and narukami overall Kagero, nothing anything of note heat shot as a reprint is nice because it's probably gonna work very well with of course the restanding of dauntless drive and dauntless reverse so that's probably gonna be very good so easy access to that one murakumo overall more copy support i think the more important one here is that we see a new reprint of mayor maru which was a very expensive promo so probably now we finally get a cheap version of the card ever narukami again nothing really special they're basically more bind support that's gonna work and interact with dungary yes even the great free vanquisher support unit because its bind effect isn't vanquisher restricted the only skill that this card cannot use in dungary is going to soul and draw a card so it's still going to be useful for dungary in that sense then the following clans we got dementia please spike brothers and pill moon for dementia please both grade twos are actually pretty good because die dragon is kind of expensive and now we finally get a cheaper alternative and the grade two is a promo that we already got if i remember correctly but it's great to have an easier access and i believe it's actually a pretty decent card to have nonetheless so having an easier access to this card is very nice and die brave is basically the same as die dragon but i believe die brave wasn't that expensive so it's there just to make sense with die dragon i believe and uh, for Spike Brothers, nothing really anything on special. Maybe I'm missing something. Again, I'm not the biggest Spike Brothers player. The Grade 2 promo is nice, but I didn't really have the thought that it's going to be a very important card and very powerful. And I don't know if it's actually that expensive to get. Yes, it was a promo, but maybe not really one of those expensive ones. Nonetheless, we now got an easier access to the card. So, Spike Brothers players, at least you have that. And then for Pill Moon, I'm a little bit disappointed in the choices of Silver Thorns. Like, Dorian is fine and all, but the Grade 1 is kind of iffy in my opinion in my opinion i wish they chose the triple r's as i think those are actually getting expensive but i'm not sure with all the buyouts happening now in premium what is it and what is expensive but we do see the new grade 4 which is a import that we finally are getting now is it going to be very good and important for the new silver Thorn decks i'm not sure it does give the deck spot removal which could be huge but we have to wait and see until we get the final final deck list if it's actually gonna matter then we see bermuda triangle aqua force and mega conley overall nothing really special on this page because for bermuda triangle we've got ellie which is nice but the rest is 
whatever. Aquaphor's got Milsum support, which makes sense. The only issue that I have is, yes, Tidal Assault is nice, but I wish that they replaced Tidal Assault with Pursuit Assault. We still didn't get the import, we need it, but we still didn't get it. Hopefully, maybe in the volume 5 and 6 we do see it, but still, we're waiting for Pursuit Assault. And for Megan Conley, these cards are kind of whatever, two of them are promos we already got, that didn't really do anything, and the great one for Machinings isn't really that amazing, it was already low rarity, so yeah. Then for volume 4, we see Angel Feather, Shadow Paladin, and Gold Paladin, but for Angel Feathers, the only thing that I'm very excited about is the Grade 2 promo, because I think we never got her, but I could be wrong on that one. Now, we also see the Grade 2 on low, below that, which is pretty good, but we already got her as a promo shop tournament, I believe, and she's in a set not all too high rarity. And then for Shell Paladin, I'm a bit on the fence. Like, I get that these cards are actually pretty good in terms of the top two cards, Abyssal Isle and the Grade 2 Hawk, because the Grade 2 is basically a perfect card, and the Abyssal Isle is basically a draw engine that's really good with the main. But I honestly would have preferred that we've got the import for Claritor Dragon. We still didn't get those cards, just like Pursuit of Salt. And yes, I know it's not a good deck, it's not that powerful. But for anybody that is waiting for those cards and want to play with Claritor Dragon, they still have to wait longer before we finally get those cards. And Luart isn't even getting support. And the new support wave in this set probably isn't going to play in the main. We're not going to play her because she isn't going because she doesn't have the Revenger name. So I'm kind of confused why they went this route because Luart is the one that's getting support but it is what it is and then for gold paddling we got Ezel's right chain support which makes sense because we get Ezel support then we got Nubatama Tachikaze and Nova Grappler and Nubatama makes sense we got the Magatsus because we got more Magatsu storm and the grade one import is very nice because it's Magatsu support that we never got so now we finally got that as well right on time with the new Magatsu reverse then for Tachikaze this makes sense this is the other half of the generic Gaia engine because we already got the multi tackers these are the other part that may basically give more consistency to it so I think these are fine re prints on part of that and then for nova grappler we've got beast deities but i'm not really that keen on the grade two choices because they're kind of whatever maybe they work very well with epic buster revert but we have to wait and see the great one is a promo that, that i'm not sure if we already already got it but if we didn't now we have it and then for the final three clients we got link joker dark Riders, and gear chronicle again nothing really special here the link joker ones are two promos but we already got those and i don't really believe that the great one i think she's black gates or opener of the black gates I cannot remember if she actually been played all too much in the recent recent years. So I'm not sure if this is going to be very important, especially with Chaos. And then for Dark Regulars, like, the cards themselves are fine. But I believe they're already being replaced for other cards that are better for the respective archetypes. The Grade 2 promo that gets a higher base power is nice in premium. But I'm not sure if, her, if she was really expensive and needed a, a reprint. But we got these cards and we already got a lot of other good cards in Dark Raggers being reprinted. So they're running out of options and these are probably the next best things. And then for Gear Chronicle, although the cards aren't that amazing, they do make sense with the new support that we're getting. Because the Dragon binds her stuff, which works with the new Time Lead Maidens. And then the Gear Colossus also binds your own card, but more importantly, gets a Battle Door effect for your entire turn. And with the whole multi-attacking, can be very devastating, so that also makes sense. The only thing that's a bit off is Garunta, the, the Time Leap card that we got before these Time Leap Steam Maidens. But I'm not so sure if it actually interacts with these cards. We have to wait and see until we get the actual skill specifications. And otherwise, it probably is basically an easier get to get the promo. But even then, the promo that we've got not all too long ago wasn't that hard to get. But for anybody that didn't get the card, now they have an easier access to it. But we have to wait and see if it actually will matter. And once again, I cannot count because I forgot three more clans. Because we also have Grand Blue, Great Nature, and Neonectar. And the only ones that actually are of note here is Grand Blue. Because just like what we saw with Tachikaze that we got the other half of the generic package. Here we also got the other half of the generic package for Grand Blue. Because we now have Ghost Ships, Skeleton Navigator, as well as Cutlass. Which basically rounds up the entire package with the reprinted of Skull Dragon and the rest. So now we have the entire core of Grand Blue on triple R value and very easy accessible which is very nice now for great nature i'm not really that keen on these reprints because they're basically whatever the only thing that's a import here is the great one because i believe we never got that promo but i'm not sure if the promo is actually any good i could be missing something here but 
we got that card now. And then for Neo Nectar, makes sense. We got more Musketeer support. Interesting enough, Sylvia already got reprinted in the Revival selection. But if you don't play Premium and only V, now you got the entire Musketeer package as well. Because in the previous support wave, we got the other Musketeers reprinted. So now you got everything that you need in the last couple of sets on triple rarity, but for a much lower price, which is pretty nice. Now that said about the reprints, let's dive into the set four news as we got a couple of little bits of information that gives more context to the entire set itself. And first off, we finally got a release date for set four, which is February the 11th. Now that's actually nice because that means we are slowly closing the gap with Japan because our gap is quite huge because with set free we are like three months apart and then luckily with set free dropping in December set four is like two months later and that means we're slowly getting closer because I believe in Japan it's three months apart because they also got the collab sets in between which we don't the only thing that's in between set three and set four is token rumble for us which probably won't do anything because token rumble did hardly anything back in Japan when it originally was released after set one and we are then in set three so that at least makes the gap between set three and set four a lot smaller than set two and set three that we have right now and then the other information we got for set four is a confirmation for right line support from the new right lines in set three because they confirmed artworks for a new card that supports Greedon, Gravidia as well as Flagberg and I'm not sure if I said the name Gravidia right because I don't remember her actual name but it's Space Ghidorah that gets more support so for Greedon we're probably going to get a new Desire Devil as it looks really in theme of the other Desire Devils and then for Gravidia we I think we're gonna get new a new meteor order but this could maybe be a special type of meteor order that interacts with the other meteor orders or something or it could be a unit that works with it i don't know it's basically a big chunky space rock that's gonna do something and then finally we see a unit that looks to be like a great free flagbird support because it looks very aggressive and very very strong but we have to wait to see what this is actually gonna do and what it will entice because honestly flagberg of all the three decks looks to be more of a complete engine that already works pretty well it just needs more consistency options or maybe bigger payouts and that could be this new card now the final things that we got are a couple of new promos Two of them aren't really that eventful, but one of them is actually really interesting. So let's take a look at these promos. And first off, we got a Dragon Empire promo for Overdress, which is this great one, which has the skill Auto Rigor Circle. When the attack that this unit boosted hits a Vanguard, cause Counterblast 1. Choose one of your opponent's rearguards and retire it. So this isn't really that eventful. It is relatively cheap because it's Counterblast 1 to pop something, but the unhit is kind of annoying, so it might not always come up. But maybe there will be a deck that can actually capitalize on this this could be eugene support but i don't really think this is all too go good because it also is on the 7k body but it's a promo and i'm glad that the promo is gonna have a skill like this now if we move to the v series then we got two promos and one of them is for narukami and we see this grade 2 which has the 9k base because it's an exo clan and its effects are auto when is units placed on the rigor circle or put onto the guardian circle and this is what i really like because they're taking the naming scheme of overdress meaning you can place on the rigor circle get its effect intercept with it and still get its effect again that's very important and what do you get cost soul blast one and bind a card from your hand your opponent choose a card from their hand bind it and both players draw a card so for soul blast one you both bind something and you both draw a card now that isn't all too great in just a generic sense because you pay a soul blast for both players to draw a card now, binding a card is very important because most decks cannot interact with their bind zone. So if you're up against a grand blue player, they cannot discard their skull dragons or something because they're forced to bind. So at the very least, you negate those type of advantage they can generate with the discard. And as soon as you're Narukami, you can actually generate value from binding them because if it's during your turn, you can bind something like a Chatura, which immediately calls itself to the field so you don't lose the value while you still keep drawing. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that you give your opponent 
this cycle nonetheless. They don't generate value with discarding the unit, but they can dig to their deck a bit faster to get to their pieces, so you need to be careful on that front. Now, with the interaction of guarding, this could matter, because depending on how they set up their field, usually a player, if they are running out of resources, they are putting all their offensive cards onto the field and keep their defensive cards in their hand, aka their triggers. Now, if you intercept with this card and force this effect off, they're forced to bind a trigger, which means they have much less shield value next turn when you start attacking. So this could be a very good option to immediately rip shield value from their hand. And if you're up against a deck that can stack their deck, Oracle Think Tank, for example, or maybe Genesis, you can basically screw with that because you're forcing your opponents to draw a card. So they draw the top card of the deck and you negate that aspect. So this could be something that comes into play with that, depending on how, what you're up against and how you can use this card. So you need to be very mindful of this particular interactions. But this card also has another effect which comes into play with his first ability, which is Contiguous or Rigged Circle and Guardian Circle. During this turn, if either player's cards are binded, this unit gets power plus 5k and shield plus 5k, active on the opponent's turn too. So this is the reason why both players bind a card, because effectively it becomes a 14k attacker and 10k interceptor. So besides the interactions that I already pointed out with its first skill, it also gets just raw numbers printed on the card, making it a bit more flexible, thus putting more value behind the soul desk and basically justifying the cost of the card. So overall, I think it's not bad of a card and I think it has some purpose within our economy, especially with the new support coming on the horizon with Dungaree, could definitely matter. But it's probably going to be a tech choice depending on the player if they like this interaction or not. And depending on what type of meta environment you're facing. Because if they do stuff with a top deck or something in that scheme, this could be a very good anti-meta pick. But right now, it's just a promo. We have to wait and see if we get it. I hope we get it because I like these type of skills. But Narukami aside, we also got a Genesis promo. Which is actually kind of ridiculous. Because we get a Denial Griffin in Genesis in standard let me repeat that again we get a denial griffin in standard for genesis you know what no it's not a denial griffin it's a hatred around it's a hatred around for genesis a very good reason why i like this card a lot so the card that i'm talking about is this grade 2 frimulus magician biratrum and its effect is auto when is put onto the guardian circle so intercepting also works cost Counterblast 1 and Soul Blast 3, choose one of your opponent's rearguard circles with a stand unit. Your opponent looks at the top card of their deck and calls it to a chosen rearguard circle. Your opponent cannot activate auto abilities from this call. Okay, let me repeat this again. It's not a hate around for Genesis. It's a power crept hate around dragon for Genesis because not only will it circumvent resist because it targets the circle, it also negates on place effects, so it just becomes a vanilla card that's put onto the field. So no weird interaction that screw you over if you accidentally call a card that actually has a very powerful on place effect. So yeah, um, this is actually really good. Yes, the counter blast cost and the soul blast cost is is heavy and can be taxing, but. In the right circumstance and when you use this card wisely on the right timing this can do a lot of mayhem on your opponent's side and it's funny that they decided to neuter and nuke the stand loop decks in premium right before they release a card that basically counters the those decks immediately because if you're up against a full power blade master stand loop deck and they can hit all the stands they want you resolve this card and force them to call the card on top of their token and the entire turn is shut off. Like that is the power of this card. If it's used in the right circumstances, it can completely nuke an entire combo and end the turn right on the spot. Basically what Hate Around and Denial Griffin are doing for the respective clans. Now, I need to keep in mind, it is relatively costly because it's Cataclysm 1, Soul Blast 3 and unlike those two cards, you need to hard draw into this card. Now, again, for G Guardians, it's the same sense because you need to hard draw into the heals. But typically, it should be easier to get to those cards because you have a lot of filtering and potentially searching for those effects and for those type of cards. But I don't know if Genesis has a particular card that allows you to search a card on demand when you need it the most. I cannot come up the top of my head, but there probably is a card like that. Probably. 
But overall, I'm very excited about these cars. Uh, the promos are probably the ones that I'm most excited about. The Narakami and Genesis one are very, very exciting. Of course, I'm very excited for the new cars that we're going to get out set for because we already talked about the new upgraded boss units. 10 days ago or I think 11 or 12 days ago from this point from this perspective and of course the new support that we're going to get for the ride lines is also very exciting but we we don't know anything we only have artwork but I cannot go from that as long as we don't get skills that's all we got that's all we got so we have to wait and see till we get more of that and as soon as we are in um what do we call it collab limbo it probably will have a take a while. And that's also the reason why... Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I haven't really uploaded much. Because I'm not really interested in the collapse set for Shaman King. As we're probably not going to get it. Or when we're going to get it. It's probably a year down the line. So it's less important or less impactful. And then the hype around is probably already going to die out. So that's the reason why I don't really give a lot of time and attention to these cards. That we're going to get for Shaman King. Bear, uh, excuse me if you're very excited for that. Or you're interested in those cards. I'm not really going to cover them on the channel. As I personally not really really invested in those particular cards and that's also where i want to end this video now i have been away for quite a while or i've not been away for quite a while but i haven't uploaded a video in a while on the channel and there are multiple reasons why why that's the case one of them shaman king being a thing i'm less invested in this current era of vanguard because of all the reveals being focused on the collapse set which i'm not invested in also a lot of things happening behind the scene that's taking more time off my hands from the youtube channel does not allow me to focus more on the channel but i'm slowly getting back into my rhythm it was very nice to get back into this whole filming and i'm very very energetic again i'm very excited to make more content but i'm going to start slowly uploading more consistently don't expect like a daily upload straight from this video onward as i have no backlog and i need to start all from scratch again but we're gonna start once again because there are definitely a lot of videos that i want to make that i haven't had the time in the last couple of months to make that i hopefully can now do because there are less information coming on the horizon because of the collapse set so it's a blessing in disguise so bear with me for the coming days when we start unloading a lot more content on the channel once again but with that said i'm very curious what you guys think of the cards and the reprints and everything that we talked about in today's videos because the information is new it's kind of outdated already but i'm very curious nonetheless what you think of this and let me know what your thoughts are on clan selection as well as set four for overdress as there is actually a lot to talk about even though we don't know much but we continue in the comment section down below as always i want to give a huge shout out to my patreon supporters over patreon.com slash freaking insider you guys are amazing if you want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel you can simply go to patreon.com slash freaking insider and become a patron today but with that said i've missed a time leap and i'll see you guys in the next one